Hello, hi, I'm Nick Burgess, and today I'm going to talk to you, I'm a quant, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to become a quant. So what I've done is I have put together a, a PowerPoint uh, pack, uh, I've done that today, and I'm going to share that on the links below in this uh, video, and I'll take you through that, and it takes you through the steps on how to become a quant, uh, what that is, how to do it, and why to do it, why, why to become a quant. So um, let's go, let's jump in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share the screen, I'll take you through that uh, presentation. Here we go. Give me one second. Here we go. Okay, so here we are. How to become a quant, what, how, and why by myself, Nicholas Burgess. So um, we've got three sections, what, how, and why. So what is a quant? Uh, so quants, we work in quant, uh, so we work, obviously we work in quantitative finance. It's a highly lucrative field. It's very stimulating intellectually. Um, and quants are working with a combination of mathematics, computer, computer science, and finance. And we're using all of those methods to analyze and predict financial markets. So surprise, surprise, professionals in this area are known as quants. And we develop and implement mathematical models. We use sophisticated algorithms. We work with data-driven strategies. And we're trying to gain insights into financial behaviors um, to optimize trading and manage financial risk uh, in the summary. So more specifically, uh, quants work at, uh, we have different types of quants, and we have some quants working in hedge funds, proprietary trading firms, asset management companies. And we call that the buy side because they typically buy the financial products uh, and they're looking to sort of predict markets. So the buy side sort of, uh, yes, they, they buy the financial products. And then we have investment banks, which we call the sell side because the investment banks are packaging those products and selling them to the buy side, to, to clients and to financial professionals on the buy side. So the sell side, um, that would be typically investment banks. Um, and the quants there, they're, they're mostly looking at fair value, models, risk management, and they typically work in C++. Now, when fair value, why are they looking at fair value? Because they're typically market making. They're creating product, and they're going to sell them to you today. They're not looking so much at predicting where the markets will go. Um, they definitely do that, but they're focused on market making. They're focused on selling products to clients and to the buy side. And so they tend to concentrate on fair value, uh, fair value calculations, so present value, risk, and the models and the risk management techniques to support that business, that market making business predominantly. Then we have the buy side, and it's a very different type of quant work on that side. So the, the buy side quants, they're typically working in hedge funds, looking at trading strategies, looking more prediction where the markets are going to go. They use machine learning, and they tend to work a lot more in Python because uh, Python has a lot more uh, packages to support machine learning and those predictive technologies. Uh, so it's a very different sort of field, different type of work in sell side, buy side. Similar, but, but uh, there are some differences. Now, they're diff so the different types of quants. Uh, so we typically have, uh, we, we do have quant traders. So we have traders that are designing, implementing, and executing their own trading strategies, um, often with a focus on automation and market efficiency. We have quant researchers. They're, their roles are predominantly to work on those uh, predictive sort of mo models uh, where they want to sort of predict the markets and the researchers will be sort of focusing uh, most of the time on that. So they're predominantly found on the buy side in, in the hedge funds. They use a lot, of, they leverage on uh, predictive technologies. They tend to use uh, Python because it's better. It uh, has more features uh, for machine learning and AI. Uh, so uh, that's the quant researchers working on the models. Then you have uh, my, people like myself, the, the quant analysts. So uh, they build and maintain pricing models and risk analytics for, for the trading desk. So they're building the analytics, putting all the models, to, models together for pricing and for risk. They typically work on the sell side and they use C++ to deliver uh, low latency solutions for electronic market making, live risk management and present value calculations. So they, they really do, um, they want to sort of quite often focus on speed. That's predominantly why they're working in C++. I guess C++ has been around a long time. It's, it's a very, um, there are a lot of mature sort of frameworks and packages to support uh, fair value calculations and model calculations in general. C++ is super fast. Um, less so for Python, uh, and so C++ is very suitable for, for high speed, um, high speed pricing, trading, and working with those electronic markets for a live quotation 
and live risk management. So C++ is, is um, so you tend to find C++ uh, being used by the quant analyst. Now quant strategists, um, they could be considered sort of desk quants, so trading desk quants. They work very closely with the trading teams to provide quantitative models, pricing and risk support. So they support all the models and they bridge the gap between the research and the execution. So they're working sort of between quant researchers, quant traders, and even between the quant analysts. So they're there to sort of predominantly support the traders. Uh, perhaps their trader isn't a quant and the, then they'll have a quant uh, strategist to support them with any kind of quant queries they have. They'll be building the tools, they'll be putting together all the analytics for the specific user cases of the trader um, and any kind of support. So they'd be sitting there on the, on the trading desk and it's quite, it's not unusual for quant strategists to become quant traders or perhaps, or, or other types of quants. So maybe this potentially is a starting point uh, for, or an entry point for, for, for quants perhaps. Uh, it's a great uh, learning ground. So you, you get to see what the traders are doing with your analytics, how, how it all works and the traders sort of fill you in with that live sort of market knowledge. So I think it's an excellent uh, place to be as a quant. And then we have sort of quant developers um, can feel a little bit more like IT. So these guys um, will de design the software and the technology infrastructure that supports uh, the trading business. It enables the traders to implement and risk manage their trading strategies efficiently in security. They take care of all the software and make sure everything's running, running smoothly. There's less of a requirement for the developers to know how the models work. It's more about making sure that they do work. So the developers, the analysts and the researchers, they work together. Um, and developers have a strong focus on the technology side of things. So how do we become a quant? That's um, now that we know what, what a quant is, how do we become one? So we there's certainly an educational background that we that we need, that we require just to understand what we're doing and just have a, a solid grasp of uh, what's happening in the market. So we typically need an undergraduate degree, a BSc in a STEM field such as mathematics, engineering, computer science, physics, finance, and we also do need a master's degree, a postgraduate master's degree in financial, ideally in financial engineering. And that's really just a, as an entry work, entry requirement. So that's very important. Um, obviously, we can study. Um, we can study. Um, there's a lot of distance learning courses we can do. So if cost is, becomes a problem, we can obviously sort of work and sort of finance our, our studies through distance learning. That's that's a very good option um, for those that uh, have challenges sort of financially to support that uh, that to support our studies. So. Uh, perhaps consider that as an option, but a lot of these postgraduate degree degrees, they are very, very expensive and you can go into quite a lot of debt. And why would we do that? Which we'll touch upon uh, next. Now, um, essential skills. Uh, we definitely need to know about probability statistics. We need to know about stochastic calculus, linear algebra, optimization techniques. And these skills we typically get from our financial engineering course. So it, it's very difficult to know about stochastic calculus. Quite often that's not taught at BSc. Um, so a lot of the techniques, just to be able to do, do the day-to-day -day work as a quant, uh, you pick up a lot of the basics from the MSc and the rest you will sort of pick up on, on your job. So, the, so I would say a big big part of your of, of the quant role is research where you actually sort of read papers, learn more mathematics, learn more programming. Uh, so you definitely do learn on the job, but you do need to have some that starting point and those essential skills are here and you typically pick them up from your finance, from your master's in financial engineering. Now, programming knowledge, uh, we definitely need to be proficient in C++ and Python. Um, more C++ for the um, sound side and more Python for the buy side, but often you need to have both. And then there's uh, the financial knowledge that you need. You need to have an understanding of financial instruments, market microstructure, um, and the popular concepts include things like the Black-Scholes model, knowing the knowing volatility models such as Heston, Stochastic Locavol, Bogomi models, market microstructure, and order dynamics. How do the markets actually work? How do they? How do we, how do we execute our trades? Yield curves, bonds, credit, derivative price, all kinds of things that we need, so that we're going to need to know. Um, and then also techniques like Monte Carlo, how to run a Monte Carlo simulation, what is a PDE, what is a tree, how, how to do those things. And a lot of that will be picked up from your MSc in financial engineering. And then the rest, any gaps, you just fill those and you learn those uh, on the job. And there'll be a big chunk of your of your role will be to sort of go away and learn, learn more and um, improve your, your knowledge of financial markets, um, mathematics, and all these different techniques that we need to know, including the programming.
Um, so even if you, so even in terms of programming, I, I would say you don't need to be perfect and that you need to know enough to sort of get by. And you can always supplement your, your knowledge as and learn more on the job. So that's a fantastic thing about the quant uh, role. You, it's, it's a role where you, you never know everything and you're constantly learning and improving. And that's a fantastic part of the job. Now, uh, quant CVs and interviews, um, very difficult. So we tend to have exam style interviews and they're, they're very, they can be very challenging. And they, they eventually, what if you, when you have enough interviews, you find that a lot of the style and a lot of the kind of questions can feel similar, feel like it repeats. You will be tested on mathematics, brain teasers, coding challenges, financing, finance and training concepts and problem solving, brain teasers. Now, um, so it can make it quite challenging. I would say there's probably a 90% failure rate in quant interviews, mostly because you don't know what people are gonna ask you about. And it's and it can feel like there's um, people that your interviewer will expect you to memorize, and just know certain things. Uh, and that's very challenging because you just, um, this, it's such a broad uh, subject and you just can't know everything. And that really does come out in the interviews, to be honest. Um, so. Should you fail an interview, which is very common, even for senior ones like myself, um, you just go again, don't be afraid to fail, and you just try again. And you only need to find one job. So um, it's not unusual to fail your quant interview, even for senior quants, just because the interviews themselves are quite tough. Maybe you have a bad day, or maybe this is just a topic you haven't covered before. So um, so yeah, so don't, don't be afraid to fail, try. And uh, you may need to try a few times, but you need to be persistent. Don't give up uh, because you will be successful. Now, useful resources for the quant interviews. Um, you definitely need to get some quant interview books, uh, a very popular one, which is a bit old now, which is uh, Hid on, on the Street. Um, that one's available on Amazon. There are quite a lot of others. This one's a very popular one that's been used many times. Um, so that's a good starting point. And then similar books. And then in terms of quant coding practice, I strongly recommend using Hacker Rank where you can sort of practice interview questions. So uh, quite often in interviews, you'll be expected to sort of code live to give you a problem. There'll be a timer you know, and you'll be sort of coding in front of someone that's quite popular. And uh, Hacker Rank is a great place to practice. There are there are other websites, but these are, these are good places to start. Now, before you can get to your quant interview, we need to talk about the quant CVs. Um, due to high demand, uh, quant, C, quant CVs are generally scanned by the high hiring managers, and quite often hiring managers will only spend about 30 seconds per CV. Um, the main reason for not interviewing or selecting candidates, they, one of the main reasons is TLDR, too long, didn't read. Um, so if your CV is quite verbose, or if it's a lot of paragraphs, a lot of dense text, uh, quite often managers just, just won't read it and they'll just go on to the next one. So it really do it really helps to maybe have bullet points to make things stand out, um, no more than two pages, but make sure it's not verbose. Bullet points is a good thing. Um, make sure you have the right keywords and um, just make it very easy, very light to read. Um, make sure all the things you want to communicate jump out. Now, many CVs, they're being filtered and screened using search engine optimization, seeing this more and more. And um, CVs with uh, will be screened. They're looking for keywords, and it'll be the same keywords that you'll see on the job postings. So the best thing to do is to look at the job postings, make sure all those keywords are on your CV, because if they're not, you may not um, get, your CV may not get to a hiring manager. So uh, make sure your CV is search engine optimized. It's quite common to start your, when you're writing your CV, start with all the keywords and then put the text around it. That's quite common. So um, just make sure your CV is not too verbose, easy to read, bullet points recommend, something that your skills just jump out and make sure you have all the keywords, uh, the relevant keywords um, on your CV as well. And those keywords, like I said, you can get from, make sure that you look at the job post, what keywords have been used there, make sure they're on your CV. Now, why why would we want to go and uh, why would you want to become a quant? Why would you want to have a difficult interview process? Why would we need want to spend sort of thousands of pounds on uh, on our education, on master's programs, and the like? Uh, so the main reasons uh, why people want to become a quant, um, there's definitely a high salary potential. So you do get rewarded financially, and sort of the, the maybe the the money that we spend on our education, you will get it back um, uh, with with, with with time, you will earn that back. Not too long, 
um, hopefully, but the salaries are quite are, are very good, and um, and you will get you'll be able to pay back the um, the debt that you've gone into to finance your studies to become a quant, um, and that will serve you well um, for, for many years. Now, work projects are definitely very intellectually challenging, rewarding. I would say no two days are the same. Yes, we are. There's a structure to our work. But at the same time, you really just don't know what you're going to face. I mean, traders may ask you one day, can you set up a, a new product? Can you adjust a model? Can you create a new model? Um, can you, I need some risk right now. You just don't know what they're going to ask you for. And, you, and, you, the, and you're using cutting edge technology, machine learning, using AI. The models themselves are very interesting. If you're looking at Monte Carlo techniques and PDEs and trees, new models, new technologies. You might need to go to conferences to learn about new things. And it's definitely a, a very large sort of research element to the role uh, where you just need to learn new things. You know, the markets are changing, things are evolving. You need to adjust your code, you need to plan ahead. How am I gonna um, adjust all the models in my code? I'm gonna adjust all my products. How am I gonna, you need to sort of strategize how, how your technology is gonna to adapt to markets, to the markets, so you can get the best prices, so you can get consistent prices throughout. So there's no arbitrage opportunities. Uh, so, you, so your business can continue to function, you know, and speed is sometimes is a problem too. You want your code to be very fast. You want, you know, I, I'm working with typically with models that are working to nanoseconds, markets are electronic, new te technology is just evolving so fast and you need to stay competitive. And so you have to be researching and staying up to date with all these things. It's a very fascinating, uh, rewarding field with cutting edge technology and very, working with very, very smart people. There's um, excellent career growth potential as well. It's a very fascinating role. It's uh, You're rewarded in, in many ways intellectually. Technology is, is uh, fascinating too. The projects are excellent. Salary is great. Um, it's a great role to be in with great potential as well. Now, should you want more information, you can find, you can find me, uh, my website is, is here, uh, it provides a lot of links to different quant uh, uh, resource, uh, resources and materials. You can follow me on LinkedIn. I, I post very regularly on live quant uh, research projects. Um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I where I talk a lot about sort of quant projects and uh, algo algo trading, and you can sub subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, uh, which where I post on algo trading and quant research. All the links are here. Um, thank you for listening to me. Please subscribe to my channel, uh, my YouTube channel. That really helps. And uh, thank you very much for your time.